All right, guys, welcome back to Movies with Bob. We're going to be watching some more of Mark Norman's Out to Lunch uh, comedy special today. The first part of it was great. It was like a laugh for five seconds. So let's get right back into it. I don't want to upset. That's not my intention. You know? I'm upsetting people on accident now. I was at a Starbucks recently. This guy handed me my coffee. I went, hey, thanks, Chief. This guy goes, ooh. <laughs> don't say Chief. It's offensive to Native Americans. I was like, how is that offensive? He goes, whoa, don't say how. <laughs> Come on. How do we get here? Weird times. Weird times. True. Taking words away. You know, I get it. You know, words hurt people. I get it. You know, but here's the thing. We're kind of in like a weird word prohibition. Can't say this. Can't say that. That's why I feel like every now and then we should all go to a politically incorrect speakeasy. <laughs> Just somewhere we can all go to say horrible stuff and nobody cares. You got no hate in your heart. You don't want to hurt anybody. But if you can't say it there, give us a place you can. Right? You go down some creaky stairs, you bang on a big steel door. The guy's like, what's the password? Retarded. Get in here! <laughs> All right. It's like the 90s again. Because you know? uh. offensive words, they're like alcohol. Sure, you can abuse it. Sure, you can hurt people. If you do it responsibly, it's a good time. Yeah? Right. <laughs> Just don't do it at work. Don't do it around kids. But go home, close the door, take the edge off. Ah, midget. <laughs> I don't want to say little people. That's like drinking no duels. <laughs> but of course, I get it. I just, you know, find it funny. I get it. But here's the problem. We forget that no one's politically correct up here. We're all animals. And we're all trying to, we're all seeing the same thing. We're all thinking the same thing. No one's PC in their brain. That's just a filter you put on when you talk, so you seem nice. Like, no one sees a hot girl bend over and thinks, look at that independent woman. I like to treat her equally. <laughs> <laughs> ah, we're sick. Men and women. We're gross. But look where it's all gotten us. Doesn't it feel like the whole country's pent up? Feels like everybody's angry right now. We got white supremacists, protests, hate groups. It's weird you're allowed to be hateful in America as long as you're not specific. Isn't that weird? You know, if you're like, I hate Mexican people, everybody's like, oh my God, what a bigot, prejudice. But if you're like, I hate people, everybody's like, ha, fucking right. <laughs> Isn't that worse? People are angry now, man. I had one of those uh, White Lives Matter rallies go by my house the other day. I freaked out, then I realized, oh, it's just a half marathon. <laughs> I was close. I don't know. Just be a good person. What about that? Just be nice to people, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, a lot of it doesn't add up. I can't keep track of all the rules. Like, transgender, what do you think? <laughs> That's how I feel. I don't give a shit. You, know? <laughs> you want to go for a man, a woman? Go nuts. Well, go labia. <laughs> What's the beef? Look, it's weird to hate someone because they're trans, right? But it's also weird to love someone because they're trans. Shouldn't you like them based on who they are as a person, content to the character? People are so phony. I love Caitlyn Jenner. Why? She sucks. <laughs> She's against gay marriage or ran over a person. What's the good part? <laughs> and they so go, well, true. they have hard lives. All right, well, so do midgets. <laughs> Why don't you talk about how much you like them? Where's that hashtag? I don't see any tweets about midgets. Who's got a hard on a midget? Hard to get around, hard to drive, hard to get work? No love. And look, I'm not anti-trans, but I am pro-midge. <laughs> I just don't get why we help one group and not another. It's just kind of trendy. And people say, well, trans aren't allowed everywhere. Well, you ever been to a roller coaster? Oh. <laughs> At least trans we accommodate with the bathrooms. Midgets, you ever seen how tall a toilet is? Well, imagine having to jump to take a dump. <laughs> Weird. No help, no support. And you know what's great about midgets? I got a couple midget friends. They're good eggs. You never see a midget complaining. Never. Every other group complains. Never a midget. Never see it on the news, sitting at a desk, legs dangling, a little fish egg. <laughs> Never. Every other group complains. I see women on the news. We have a glass ceiling. Midgets are like, you're worried about the ceiling? Holy shit. <laughs> I'm trying to fuck with this counter, baby. <laughs> Interesting. See, I guess I'm too open-minded, because I support all transition, not just sexual. Why do we stop at sexual? I support transition of personality, transition of uh, opinion. Right, like Kevin Hart. Kevin Hart got in trouble with some offensive tweets from years ago. Well, I'm not the same guy I was from years ago. I've transitioned. I used to have sex with 16-year-olds when I was 16. Oh, <laughs> now I don't. I'm different. Well, years ago, he said some offensive stuff. Well, years ago, she won the men's relay. People change. Right? <laughs> Why do you support that and not that? Huh. It just tells me if I ever get into trouble now, I'm just going to get a sex change because you got to kiss my ass. Hey, Mark, we heard that interview from 10 years ago. <laughs> that was Mark. I'm Margaret. <laughs> I don't know. I support Kevin Hart also because he's a midget. <laughs> oh, there we go. Mm. Mm. 
But I don't know. Everything's weird now. You know, the news is insane. The Internet's full of hate. I feel like it's the little things that keep you happy now. you got to cherish the little things. I got a Snapple today. I love a good Snapple. I love that fun fact under the cap. <clears throat> it was a good one today. It said, uh, polar bears used to be brown, but through evolution, they turned white because police were shooting them. <laughs> I know. I couldn't believe they fit all that under the cap. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yes. A lot of racial talk now. White privilege. That's the term you hear a lot now. White privilege. But I thought it was all about diversity. So shouldn't we talk about everybody's privileges? Why are we just limiting it to whitey? Let's spread the love. Let's make every group feel good. Everybody's got something. Tall people, privilege, see at a concert. Jews, no hell. <laughs> pretty good, pretty good. Women, ladies night. That's cool. Black people, I can't wear a purple suit. <laughs> Looks like fun. Everybody's got a perk. Indian people, even if you're undateable, your parents will arrange something, huh? <laughs> Let's spread the love. Who's got the energy to be racist, huh? That's got to suck to be racist. Wouldn't that be weird? Just like you go to the bank, you're like, ah, there's Jews here. I got to leave. <laughs> what a horrible life. Man, put on an outfit, go to a meeting, all that stuff. I don't care about any group enough to hate it. Do whatever you want. Go nuts. I don't, I don't want to do anything. I'm lazy. I don't want to burn a cross or a calorie. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's worked up about something. Uh, these, there's Muslims on airplanes. Well, I'd rather a Muslim on a plane than a baby. <laughs> never had a Muslim point. kick the back of my seat and piss in the aisle. <laughs> I'm just saying if the airport had a baby ban, I wouldn't protest. <laughs> yeah, but transgender, they're using the bathrooms. Well, they're still using the toilet, right? They're not leaving a hot floater in the sink. <laughs> If that was, like, their thing, then, yeah, we should totally have a meeting. That's crazy, you know? <laughs> then you get the hillbilly guy. Well, what if one of these perverts puts on a dress and looks at my wife in the bathroom? Ooh, what a score. Some guy can see your toothless wife shitting? Yeah. <laughs> what a lucky guy. Come on, go to work, you lunatic. Oh. But, hey, we've come a long way. We hate to admit that. We hate to admit it. We've come a long way. Like, in the 50s, we had whites only and blacks only water fountain, which is incredibly sad, especially if you're a thirsty Asian. <laughs> What the hell were they doing? Drinking out of a faucet? No one talks about it. Never come up once. Not a peep. <laughs> Nothing. Black people are pissed. Can you believe this shit? We got our own water fountain. Age like, can I get a sip? I'm dying out here. <laughs> I got a triangular hat to block the sun. <laughs> I'm a big fan of Asians. I think they're the best group. I think they're number one. I don't think they get the credit they deserve. I'm an Asian supremacist all the way. I think they're better than the rest. Any Asian people here? Hey, all right. You should be working. Come on. <laughs> What are you doing having a good time? That's not the Asian I know, God damn it! I want you dealing blackjack or sitting on a box peeling something. Come on! <laughs> Big fan. Best group. Easily the best group. No love. You guys get the short on the chopstick. It's pretty unfair. Jesus. So quiet. So secure, Asians. Every other group's got to brag and boast. Every group's got a slogan. Black people, I'm black and I'm proud. White people, white power. Hispanics, ay 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 ay. Not an Asian. Asian just head down, grades up. That's it. <laughs> Asian the bet. You never hear about Asian crime. Never. If I was an Asian guy, I would just start mugging people. And be like, hey, it's my word against yours. <laughs> <laughs> Big fan. Big fan. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think the news is a problem. The news pins us all against each other. News makes it seem like all white people are scared of minorities. I don't think all white people are scared of minorities. I do think a lot of white people are scared of looking racist. That's really the big fear with whitey. Like, if I'm walking Whitey. down the street at 4 in the morning, I see a sketchy-looking white guy coming towards me, I'm like, crap, I'm going to cross the street. If I'm walking down the street at 4 in the morning, I see a sketchy-looking black guy coming towards me, I'm like, crap, I wish I could cross the street. <laughs> <laughs> okay? I'd rather get stabbed and look like an asshole. <laughs> White people, we are so worried about looking ignorant and bigoted, I guess because of our history. Like, I, I went skiing recently with my friend. We're sitting on the ski lift. I was like, why do you see more black people skiing? Why is that? My friend has no idea, but he's going to, you know, half-ass his way through it because he doesn't want to seem dumb. So he's like, ah, uh, you know, they don't grow up with it. Like, well, I'm from Louisiana. I'm here. <laughs> wow. Ski is very expensive. Ah, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've never seen a black guy with anything expensive on their feet. <laughs> <laughs> Just say you don't know. It's all right. You sound way worse. That's why black people are smart. White people, we do crazy stuff. We swim with sharks. We go bungee jumping, cliff diving. Ask a black guy, why do they do that? They go, I don't know. That's white people shit. <laughs> That's a good answer. They don't sit around going, well, uh, you know, Europe. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But look, yeah, 
I'm a white guy. If I talk about race now, for some reason, another white person ebbly calls me racist. That's like what we do. It's like, I know you're trying to seem like a hero, but you're going to ruin that word. You're going to take the teeth out of it. It's like an important word. You're going to ruin it. Like, I was on the subway recently. I was watching an interracial couple make out. I was just staring at them. <laughs> and the guy next to them caught me. He goes, what the hell? I see you staring at them. What are you, racist? I was like, what? Racist? No, I'm a creep. <laughs> What are you talking about? I'm hard. I'm not a racist. I'm aroused. It's an important word. People abuse it all the time. A friend of mine, she's Puerto Rican. We grew up together. She's like, I hate going to the gym. The white women there all give me the stink eye because they're racist. I was like, damn, what happened? She's like, well, first I bring my food in and I eat it. Then I play my music really loud. I'm like, oh, maybe they just hate you. Let's not lump together all of Puerto Rico because you're being a twat. Right? You're being inconsiderate and rude. Take a little ownership. Look within. You can't blame everything on bigotry. Look, I grew up in a black neighborhood. I was a bedwetter. I'd sleep at their houses. Eventually, they stopped inviting me over. I was like, ah, they hate white people. No, I ruined their fucking furniture. <laughs> they didn't hate white. They hated yellow. <laughs> Sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh. mm. uh-huh. Yeah. I like all the groups. I just make jokes, you know? Remember jokes? Yeah. I met a nice girl in that Jewish app. What's that Jewish app called? The Jewish one? Uh, what's the Jewish app? Uh, not, not the other one. The other one. Uh, PayPal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Going pretty well. Yeah. A lot of ladies here tonight. That's exciting. I feel like this is like your time, ladies. This is like the year of the woman, you know? I went to the Women's March in Manhattan. That was cool. Although I got to say, I haven't heard the word pussy yelled that much since that time I rollerbladed to high school. <laughs> That was a tough morning. Yeah. It's kind of crazy what women go through, isn't it? Like, some guys just, like, whip it out and stuff in front of women. That's wild. That's bold. See, I have a penis, so I'm not that scared of new ones. But I guess if you don't have a penis, a new one's got to be pretty scary. The closest I can get to that feeling is once I was hanging out with a friend, and he just took out a gun. I was like, what the hell are you doing? He's like, well, you know I had a gun. I'm like, yeah, but we're at Whole Foods. (laughs) Because a dick and a gun are very similar. If somebody pulled out either one right now, we'd all be like, whoa, is that meant for me? Jesus Christ. (laughs) Don't point it at me. Damn. Dick and a gun, very similar. Both pointy. They shoot things. They come in different sizes. You can get a pistol or a shotgun. I'm circumcised, so I'm sawed off. (laughs) But I guess guys who do that just get confused. Because ladies, sometimes you like a penis. So guys think, hey, she liked one last night. Why wouldn't she like one with a copy machine? Women are so complex. (laughs) Because I think, generally speaking, when it comes to sex, I think men are a little more constant. You know, men like boobs, but we like boobs across the board. Boob in the bedroom, great. Boob on the bus, also great. (laughs) Dick in the bedroom, great. Dick on the bus, call the police. (laughs) Nobody's calling the police on a boob. You see a boob out in the wild, it's like seeing a deer. You're like, shh. (laughs) It's majestic. <laughs> look, there's two now. <laughs> then your other friend walks up. Hey, look at that, a boob. You're like, ah, you spooked it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah. We're cracking down on sexual harassment finally. That's good. You know who gets sexually harassed more than women? The one group? Pets. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody ever gets consent from a dog. Nobody. People just pick it up, kiss it on the face, rub its belly, do that weird, creepy, long pet where you grab the tail at the end. (laughs) We're creepy as hell with dogs. And we sound like creeps. They like it. They're begging me for it. Yeah. (laughs) Thank God dogs can't talk. We'd all go to jail, right? (laughs) Just some chihuahua in a courtroom, like, first he flipped me over. (laughs) Then he caressed all eight of my nipples. <laughs> then he slapped me on the ass repeatedly and said, you're a good girl, good girl. Oh, God. We harass dogs all day long, and they're perfect harass, and they can't talk, so they'll never report you. That's why they're man's best friend. <laughs> also, dogs forget stuff after, like, two seconds. You could stick your finger up a dog's ass and be like, well, that was weird. Frisbee! <laughs> Because really, when you break down our relationship with dogs, dogs are shameless, shameless whores, aren't they? I mean, they're like gold diggers. Look at the deal we've cut with a dog. Like, all right, pooch, I will house you and feed you, but I get to touch you whenever I want. Dog's like, what are you kidding? That's fucking amazing. (laughs) I'll do you one better. When you come home, I'll hump your leg. I'll lick my balls in front of you. And when you have sex, I'll watch. (laughs) That's fair. 
<laughs> and cats, cats are the exact opposite. Cats are like sexual assault victims. They're all nervous, skittish, head on a swivel, huh? You touch me, I'll fucking cut you. I'll cut you, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not grabbing this pussy, all right? Yeah. Now leave me alone. I gotta look out a window for an hour. <laughs> But hey, you got to listen to ladies, fellas. You got to listen, you know. A friend of mine, she's like a big feminist. She's like, ah, I have a full bush because that's how I was born. I was like, holy hell, you were born with a full bush? <laughs> that is a terrifying baby. <laughs> Cut the umbilical cord. I can't find it. <laughs> I like a strong woman. I want a woman to cat call me. Cat call us, ladies. That'd be hilarious. Start yelling out stuff at men that we don't want to hear. Stuff that would scare a guy. Now you walk past a group of girls at night when I'm like, hey, I'll tell you I love you on the first date. You're like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Holy hell. That is terrifying. Yeah, get us back. And then you walk past the girls like, hey, before we have sex, I'm going to poke a hole in the condom. This is a horrible neighborhood. <laughs> My God. Start the car. Oh, you ladies are fascinating. So complex. Yeah. One time, me and my girl were watching the news. There was a whole thing about a CEO harassing his employees. She's like, can you believe this creep? Grabbing women's asses, whispering dirty stuff in their ear at work. I was like, yeah, it's crazy. Then we got home later in the bedroom. She's like, can you do that stuff from the news to me? <laughs> I was like, I thought you hated that. She's like, I hate it. He does it. If you do it, it's hot. Huh. So you hate harassment unless you like the guy. Then it turns you on. That's fascinating. I don't think other groups like black guys get harassed by the cops, but at night they're not like, come on, pull me over. <laughs> yeah. yeah, tase me, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, my gal, she likes being insulted in the bedroom, which is cool, but nobody tells her that not all insults are sexy. I learned that the hard way. <laughs> yeah, we'll be oh, having Jesus. sex. I'm like, yeah, you whore. She's like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, you slut. She's like, yeah. I'm like, you're a bad driver. She's like, what? <laughs> like, that's the one that bothered you? <laughs> Weird. She's like, you really think I'm a bad driver? I'm like, sorry, you dirty skank. She's like, thank you. <laughs> yeah. All right, we'll stop it there. Um, this guy creates, like, great imagery with his comedy, first of all. But he just he's like a wordsmith or something. He just jokes within jokes. This is it's just a fascinating watch. I'm really enjoying this. And excited to finish it up. we got 20 minutes left of it. We'll have uh, part three coming up this week. we got more of uh, the Ricky Gervais show and Idiot Abroad. Uh, out of England coming up, too. Out of England part two uh, reaction coming up. So subscribe if you haven't. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video.